religion. He can perform those rituals if he wants to, but he does it out of his desire, out of uh, usually an, uh, to make an example, to show other people how to do it. Uh, but he doesn't have to do it. And whether he does or he doesn't do it, there's no difference in his uh, destination after death. Once you attain devotional service, once you have the landmark experience of self-realization where Krishna reveals his original form, that's it. You're home free. If you don't do another bit of sadhana again in your life, that doesn't change anything. But usually the self-realized soul does perform sadhana at least to some degree to show an example to others how they should do it. And of course the self-realized soul has to teach, which generally in this day and age means writing books or making other presentations of Krishna conscious Vedic philosophy. So that's what we're doing, uh, just to help all the people that we see who are stuck in this miserable material world and don't know how to get out. Uh, that's the duty of the self-realized soul. And when they leave this body, they go to the higher planets, or maybe they go immediately to the spiritual world, or maybe they stay some time in the higher planets, depending on their desires and their karma. The Supreme Lord arranges everything for them. He also maintains them. And we've experienced this many times. For example, the other day, uh, I had taken out all of our money from our PayPal account to get ready for some expenses that we have coming up. And then something came up uh, that where I had to pay for, uh, I had to renew our domain registration. And so I literally used up practically all the money in our account. And I was sitting there going, oh boy, what are we going to do now? And, and literally within a minute, Krishna sent someone to give a donation. I mean, literally within a minute. And I've seen this happen again and again, that when we run out of money or when we get into a situation where we need some support, somehow or other, Krishna arranges it. It's just amazing. Huh? I mean, Krishna really is God, okay? <laughs> and he can, he can arrange everything for his devotee because he's present everywhere in everything, and he knows exactly what's going on with you, with me, with everybody, and he especially pays attention to his devotees. And he, he is the kind of a person, a kind of a friend, who wants to be intimately involved in the lives and affairs of his devotees. It's not that God is far away someplace on another planet or something like that, no. God is present everywhere, in everything. He's in our hearts. He knows exactly what we're thinking and feeling at every moment. We can't hide anything. <laughs> He's seen it all. He knows it all. He's, he, he can't be shocked. So don't worry about that. But he, is, uh, he wants to be intimately involved in our affairs. Why? Because he loves us. He's the original friend. Huh? The Upanishads describe that on the tree of the body, uh, whose leaves and branches are the Vedic hymns, the, uh, there are two birds. And the birds are the same. Uh, they're the same kind of bird. But one of them is eating the fruits of the tree. And sometimes the fruits are sweet, and sometimes they're sour. Uh, sometimes they're good, and sometimes they're rotten. <laughs> Well, one bird is eating the fruits and enjoying or suffering, depending. And the other bird is simply watching. And that is the super soul. So the super soul lives with the individual soul on the tree of the body and accompanies him and experiences everything along with him. And so this is the actual situation. This isn't just a metaphor to teach us, uh, you know, to be good people because Krishna knows, like Santa Claus, you know, what, what we're doing or something like that. No, it's not a legend, it's not a myth, it's not a metaphor, it's a literal truth, it's reality. Uh, 
The super soul is there within every body, within every atom. And it's due to his influence alone that the material world is working. And we've discussed this many times, how his will is the source of creation, how his energy becomes the ingredients for the material creation, and so on and so on. And that was in the second Adhyaya. Now the third Adhyaya, we're talking about devotional service. So we want to emphasize the personal relationship between the soul and the Lord. And this personal relationship is very, very sweet. Huh? Just imagine you had a friend who loves you so much that he wants to be with you every moment. And this friend also happens to be very beautiful, very strong, very wealthy, very powerful, uh, very knowledgeable, he knows everything, can answer every question, better than Google, huh? and very renounced. So he doesn't need anything, doesn't want anything from you. Huh? He's totally renounced because he already has everything. <laughs> He's the source of everything. So he doesn't need anything. He's completely renounced. And all he wants to do is serve you and help you and make you happy. Now, isn't that the best friend anybody could ever ask for? Well, that's Krishna or the super soul. And the super soul is there. Anytime we can contact him simply by desiring to. All we have to do is turn our attention towards him, meditate on his form, on his name, uh, and understand that he's personally present, and talk with him. Talk with him just like I'm talking to you right now. Uh, say, hey, Krishna, I know you're there. When are you going to reveal yourself? <laughs> and he'll arrange something. You'll see. He'll arrange some coincidence. <laughs> Happens here every day. I mean, so many that actually I, I stopped keeping track. Because it's just like, oh, well, there's Krishna again. <laughs> what happened the other day? Oh, we had that lightning strike. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the other day, I guess maybe the neighbors were plotting against us or something. Huh? What do you think? I <laughs> All of a sudden, it was cloudy, but it wasn't raining. We hadn't heard any thunder or anything. All of a sudden, crack! There was a lightning strike, like, right next door. We haven't gone over there to see if there's anything Smoldering. damaged. Yeah, <laughs> anything smoldering. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, this lightning strike was so close that we only heard the thunder as an echo from the hills nearby. We didn't hear the thunder here at all because the lightning itself was so loud. I mean, we thought, you know, poor Florian thought it was, it was in the kitchen and he <laughs> thought he was finished, man. He thought he was cooked. <laughs> well, it was so strong that it blew the light out. Yeah, you know, fluorescent light in the kitchen blew it out. So uh, you can see Krishna protects his devotees. He's always interested in his devotees' welfare. Uh, he takes special care. And even though he's equal to everyone, in the sense that the same rules apply to everybody, still he gives special favor to his devotees. Uh, why? Because they give special favor to him. They give him their attention, their service, their study, their um, chanting, their devotional activities, and eventually their love. How do we learn to love Krishna? It's by serving him. Uh, Prabhupada used to say, love means service. If somebody says, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, but they never do anything for you, after a while you're going to start wondering, yeah, does he really love me? Or is this just, you know, hot air? So, if we really love Krishna, then we'll serve him. And by serving him, he will give us the desire to love him. And this is actually the goal of the activities of regulated devotional service. Uh, to develop the desire to love Krishna. That's why we're chanting, that's why we're offering our food, 
That's why we're engaging in different kinds of austerities, uh, giving up so many material so-called enjoyments, living a, a life of uh, detachment, renunciation, like that, and study of the Vedas and so many other things. That's why we're doing all these things, to develop the desire to love Krishna. Because once we have that desire, he responds. Uh, you got to trust me on this. He'll respond as soon as you desire to really love him. Uh, that's why I wrote that song, Really Love You. Have you ever listened to that song? Yes. Yeah. That's what that song is about. When you desire to love God, and this is beyond all scriptures, all philosophy, uh, all these learned discussions and all this... Um, ritual and paraphernalia and stuff, <laughs> rules and so on, beyond all 